me now in the hot seat is a uh, gentleman running for Brampton City Councilor, Jane Ryan. How are you doing tonight? Good. Thank you. Are you look very dapper. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, so when is election time? October 27th, 2014. Okay. Just around the corner. Just around the corner. And how are things going with your campaign? Well, I'm excited. Yeah. And I think the people that I've come into contact so far, they're excited. And um, so we're looking forward to a victory. Regional Councillor, Ward 2 and 6, Brampton. Tell me a little bit about your background, your illustrious career here in Canada. You've done many things. Um, let's, let's touch on that to give a little bit of a backstory as to what led you to run for Canada. Okay, well, first of all, I'm a graduate of Ryerson, I hold a uh, Bachelor of Technology degree, Industrial Engineering from Ryerson. Worked in the field for about 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. Sylvania, Randy Packard, Amdahl Communications. And after that, I ventured into my own business, the restaurant business in Brampton, which was very successful for about 20, 22 years. It's still going. I just passed it on to the people who are working for me. Just handed it over for them to carry on. It's still there. And um, I went to Guyana, where I'm from. I did some work there with the Ministry of Agriculture, making the contribution. And I'm back. I'm glad you're back. Well, thank you. Yeah. Tell me a little about, I, I, I lived in Brampton for 18 years. I'm in, in the downtown area now, but Brampton has changed so much. It's, the population has exploded, and the needs of the community have, have changed too. What are some of the things that you would like to propose in the plan to make great changes for Brampton as council? Well, the first thing is Brampton. Quite frankly, Brampton has not adapted to the fact that we have a rapidly growing ethnic society. So what we seem to have in our town council is still what you call addicted to entitlement councillors. They've been there accumulated years, council years, for 238 years. And like they don't want to leave. So what has happened? The society or the population, which is 523,000 now, when I moved to Brampton about 30 years ago, the population is about 150,000, or 523. So, so culturally that's changed. Right. But what is not changing is the council itself. So you still have the cronyism and the nepotism and the favoritism going on in there. And the society... And all the other isms. And the other isms. So the main thing is disconnectivism. Mm. <laughs> They've become totally disconnected from the residents themselves. So although the hypocrisy is, although council boasts about you know, we have uh, a diverse population, ethnicity, and so on and so forth. It's not being lived in a practical sense. People are still a bit alienated from this, what you call, out of touch comfort. So the framework for which, you know, the power of the region, it's not, it hasn't changed since their years. Correct. The same. That has not changed. Okay. Although the population has changed, the economics have been changing continuously. Um, but the comfort are still stuck. Okay. How are you going to bring change? Well, first of all, the first change that we have to do. I'm sure the people here will be keeping in touch, not with Mr. Ralph Ford, but we have, let's put it this way. What has to be squarely faced is that Brampton is a deep crisis. Okay? And what a crisis is that I have identified, it's a hemorrhage, hemorrhaging council or a hemorrhaging management mm -hmm. system. That has to stop. I came into this campaign to make changes to, to bring my skills, which is engineering, management, science, and my business experience, because I firmly believe that every city should be run like a business. Because we are obligated and responsible for the hard earnings of the taxpayers' money. Yeah. And we just can't be spending. <laughs> we just can't be spending people's money as if the money was not ours. I mean, we make sacrifices, we go through challenges every day to make ends meet. And when we see council, you know, they're going here, traveling first class here, here, capital investment in Brampton, $500 million to expand City Hall, Rose Theatre, 100 million, and these things are all lose last houses. So taxpayers' money have gone down. So if you don't have people with business experience who are willing to come forth from the wilderness like me, because many of us, including me, stayed in the background for too long, right. and we allow I mean, I don't want to blame the councillors. They've been trying and everything, but they're just not competent enough. So now with this growing 
uh, economic trend, marketing demand, and to face the situation, wishful thinking is not going to solve this problem. We need people to come forth who have the business experience, the engineering experience, management science, but above all, courage. Because obstacles will be coming your way. Absolutely. And being a business, business person, you know that you know you gotta make ends meet every day to pay your bills. So you have to have the courage to survive. Yeah. Okay? But above, on top of that, what I've come across here now, the residents of Brampton continue to be disillusioned, distressed, and disappointed with the level of deception and the dishonesty that is associated with our town council. So the changes are, we have to go in there with a pathological engineering approach to stop the hemorrhaging. Pathological? Correct. So pathological means like hemorrhaging, correct. Hemorrhaging is bleeding profusely. The cash is bleeding, the cash is going. We don't know where, but how? So how do you stop it? Pathological, first thing we can do, look, look at where the bleeding is, root cause. The root cause, we have an incompetent management system. The management system is there, ladies and gentlemen, 380 people in upper management who are earning $100,000 and above at an average of 140000 That equates to about $53 million in salaries. Plus, you have to carry these people, so it'll cost you at least another 100%. So we look at about 106 million in management, upper management. What are these people doing? They'll have to explain to me when I get in there what the functions that they're performing, what are those functions accomplishing, and what services, what good services that the taxpayers are getting. For example, let me put it in a nutshell. Let me get some signs here now. Our revenue, which is solely from property taxes, but 2012, when I'm quoting from the um, 2012 audited financial statements of this year, Brown. The revenue from property taxes, $309 billion. Mm -hmm. Nikki, ladies and gentlemen, we have been spending $380 million in employment costs. So if you look at what you call a revenue to expense ratio, you're looking at a number, a ratio of 1.23. So oh, that is unacceptable. So the bleeding continues. And on top of that, you have all the big investments, the 500 million to expand city hall. They want to bring it, and that would be already people. Where is the tax credit? Where is the consultation or the or the or the communication with the tax payer when these things are going on? That's disconnectivity and practical. Okay. So what you have in now is a ratio of 1.3. What Jai will do? That number has to come down to at least one, just to break it. And only then, I intend to freeze taxes right away. Don't gouge your taxpayers, don't expect them to bail you out from your incompetence. And, and property taxes have been going up and down. Well, property taxes have been going up and down. As a matter of fact, they will go up so far. I am predicting as a scientist that our newborn children will be entering Brampton with a tag, with a, with a, with a debt on their shoulders. But this is totally unacceptable. Stop the bleeding. You've got to stop the bleeding, pathological engineering. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, how can people get involved in your campaign? I'm sure you've got, well, well, I think he's got a very good platform. or follow your trail uh, leading towards Hampton? Well, it's a good question, but I will go reverse. I will go to the people. I don't expect the people to follow me. Yeah. I am going to the people, and there's only one way to go to the people because challenges like me mm -hmm. always have a disadvantage. The incumbents always have the advantage. Mm -hmm. So there's only one way, Nikki. We have to go to the people, go to that front door, and engage physically, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. What I ask for when I go there, I ask humbly for their advice. And then they're stimulated to talk, and they start talking. And remember, I'm going there to do what the people want, because Brampton, like any other city, are made up of people who have a wide variety of knowledge, experience. It is basically your major resource. And if that resource is not utilized, then you're wasting time with any government. I am so honored to have you here at the chair, and I have a really good feeling about you. I'm pretty good with predictions. Um, Joe, do you have a website that people can uh, it's, tap it, into? It's, it's uh, in the process right now, but you can get that elect jai at yahoo.ca. And of course, my telephone number is 647 720 898. And your Twitter handle is the same. Right. So well, we're trying to get a social media thing going now. But I still believe in the hard line approach, knocking on the doors. Okay. Because that's where the people, that votes. That's where the advice will be coming from. For sure. 
And you need feedback. And we need feedback. In order to build. Right, and I, I, I am a, I'm a student of the great book, In Search of Excellence. And the excellence lies in our sense. Wise words. Thank you so much, John. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Thank you. Right. Thank you.